We always have to remember that when we consider the acceleration of flow, we know that F equals MA. And so that means that if we find a region of the flow where the forces don't balance, that's where the flow will accelerate. But then when we look at the steady state solution for unidirectional flows, what you do is you find, you look at all of the body forces and you add them up, and the sum of the body forces tells you what the second derivative of the velocity is locally. So if I show the steady state solutions for Kuwait, and Poisson flow. For Kuwait at steady state, there's no body force, which means that the local concavity of the velocity distribution is zero, which means that it's linear. So this is my steady state Kuwait. If I look up at the startup of a Kuwait flow, though, now I'm asking a different question. I'm asking, where are the forces not in balance, right? So if the fluid starts out motionless, and I turn this upper wall on, right? The forces are in balances everywhere except for the top. The top's where a shear is being generated. So that imbalance of the viscous force, which is the only force in this flow, causes it to accelerate at the top. Then after it accelerates at the top, now the fluid nearby says, whoa, 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 right? So the startup of this flow looks like this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And eventually you get the equilibrium distribution. Right? For Poisson, Poisson flow is pressure driven, which means that the net body force is given by the pressure gradient. And that's uniform. And that means that the concavity of this flow distribution is The, the, the concavity can't be zero, because the, the concavity is proportional to the net body force. The net body force is uniform. I have a pressure gradient everywhere, so the pressure is non-uniform, but the gradient of the pressure is. The body force is uniform, so I have body force everywhere. And what does that tell you about the concavity? Do I have concavity in this flow distribution? Perhaps it is time for us to have our first vote of the semester. How many people vote that there is non-zero concavity in a Poisson flow? How many people think there is not any concavity in a Poisson flow? Okay, the yeses have it. Right? This is parabolic. A parabolic distribution is one that has uniform second derivative, uniform concavity. So here, everywhere there's a body force. And that body force is uniform everywhere. No matter where I look in this flow, there's a uniform grad P body force. And similarly, everywhere in this flow, there's a uniform second derivative of the velocity distribution, which creates a viscous force that counteracts that. Right. So now, back to the startup. By the way, no one has ever accused me of being succinct with my answers to questions. I know it's been about five minutes since you asked your question. We'll, we'll get to it. It'll be at some point late, late next week. Okay. <clears throat> so now, how's the startup here, right? Well, acceleration is proportional to force. The, the body force on this thing is uniform. So when this thing starts out, it starts up uniformly, right? So we get this, right? It starts up uniformly except precisely at the wall, which is where the viscous force starts instantaneously. But this starts out going like this, right? And then as the viscous uh, effects diffuse in, this starts to be rounded, right? So here, now, where are the forces in this flow? <laughs> where, are the, where are the forces in this flow? I assumed that the potential changed only in a very thin layer. Where the potential has a second derivative, that's where the net charge is. So I'm assuming that the net charge is only very close to the surface. And that means that the force here is only very close to the surface. Right? So if I look at the startup of this flow, the first thing that happens is the stuff right next to the surface accelerates. And then that effect diffuses out until you get that distribution. 